Good afternoon, and welcome to the Smart Women Savvy Money 2010 webinar series. 30 minutes on the clock, 20 minutes to teach and 10 to talk. The Smart Women Savvy Money is a platform offered through Urban Wealth Management designed to provide women with the tools and the resources they need to create the life they desire and deserve. Our calls are always held the second Thursday of each month from 1 to 1.30 p.m., except in December where it's holiday time and we know that's the last thing you guys are interested in hearing about is um, anything about uh, anything other than holiday and um, entertaining and enjoying yourself. So we will be picking up again, though, in January. Here at our website, you can check and see what our upcoming schedule of events are going to be. Currently, we have today, of course, Zenobia, our tech diva, will be back to talk about the things that she knows most about which is technology, and we've got a great topic. I'm sure all of us will be very interested to hear about. Um, in a couple of weeks, I actually will be on CNBC's Closing Bell Report again, but on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Very exciting. And then next month, we have a, a talk by our risk uh, protection specialist, Erica Gaffari, who will be talking about, is your greatest asset covered? Do you know what your greatest asset is? You probably don't, and so you might be a little surprised to find that out. November, which is not listed yet, but we will put that up today, we have our one of t uh, LA's top stylists, Laurie B., who will be back to talk about holiday dressing and how you can look like a million dollars but not spend the bank. So with that, before we get started in our talk today, I do just want to give you a couple of housekeeping items. All of our calls are recorded. You probably heard that little voice that said the recording has started. So for future reference, if you sign up for any of our webinars but you're not able to make it, we'll make sure to send you the replay link. The link goes out shortly after um, our calls uh, each day, so you will get the replay link later today, and feel free to share it with other individuals as well. Also, you should have a chat box available to you, so please, um, during the, uh, the talk, be sure to go ahead and just input your questions. Um, and at the end of the, the presentation, we'll ask um, our presenter, uh, your questions. We want to kind of keep on time because we know you ladies and men are busy and we do um, intend to just have this for a half an hour. So um, now let me move on to having and introducing our tech diva, uh, which is Zenobia Mellet. And Zenobia is coming back to us. Um, she has been an amazing speaker for us in the past. Uh, before, she's talked about managing passwords, uh, how important that is, because that drives us crazy too. Technology can be a wonderful thing, but if it doesn't work or it's too overwhelming, then it can make our lives heck. And she also shared with us her favorite mobile apps, um, things to make your life a little bit easier. So today, she's going to talk about how we can cut that digital umbilical cord and how we can get untethered from all of our devices. So with that, I'm turning it over to you, Zenobia. Well, thank you very much, and thank you for having me back. This is a lot of fun. And actually, it keeps me on my toes because I have to do some serious homework, too. And uh, But it's really cool because I get to revisit stuff and learn new stuff. And I love passing this on to all my dear people, clients, and anybody who will take the time to listen to me <laughs> chatter. Anyway, okay, so this is a good topic. And Renee, thank you for kind of putting this in my ear a little while ago. It gave me a little while to think about it. Um, Cutting the cord, now this is nothing new because every era in the development of technology typically starts out with some kind of cord or some kind of cable or attachment. And I remember I started out being a recording engineer and I did location recording, 
So I would have to carry these big, massive um, boxes of extra cables and all kinds of connectors and adapters because I was doing the sessions on location, like at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, Leo Beck Auditorium, and you couldn't just, like, there were no fries, okay? So you couldn't just go buy a connector, so I had to carry everything. Oh my. And so now it's come down to I had an experience with um, I got this new digital signage TV that I wanted to review, and it took me like 10 minutes to figure out that it had a new little connector that wasn't labeled for the audio, and I still had to run all of my speaker cable all over to get my 5.1 surround. But a lot of the signals were down to one cable, that HDMI cable. So that even is getting down to one cable and getting wireless. So there are like really, really good wireless um, home speakers out there as well. And the other thing that you all may not know that you already started cutting is because so many people have now ditched their cable subscriptions because they're walking around with the same content on their tablet or on their cell phone or on their uh, laptop. And so now with these boxes, I call them little black boxes. It's an interface box that goes between your television and your device. Um, it's called OTT. So now that's a term for you to remember, OTT, over the top. And that's what these little boxes <laughs> do because it's over the broadcast signal and you're getting it through um, the internet, all the content that, uh, and really all the content because all of the cable operators had to port their content over to all the devices because that's where the eyeballs are. So you're already starting to cut the cord and um, the immense numbers uh, and the drops of the cable subscriptions um, is really, really kind of fascinating. Um, then also technology has brought us the Internet right into the television with the smart TVs. And basically what that means is that the smart TVs have a chip inside, just like in your computer, that Wi-Fi enables your TV to be on your network. So all you have to do is to get the password, do you know where your passwords are? <laughs> get the password off of your router and type it in on the little tiny remote for your TV, and um, then you'll be able to have Internet access either off of your laptop or your smartphone, whatever's on your network. Um, and also a lot of the smart, the smart TVs come preloaded with content already. They made deals with a lot of content providers like Netflix, CBS Sports, NBC Sports. I tried to watch the, the Olympics. Uh, through the app that came with the TV. So now um, you're able to actually watch the same content and that's where the cord cutting and the untethering is already happening. And part of that is because the video experience has gotten so much better on these little devices. You've got HD on your handheld. So which wow. for some people <laughs> is probably better than what they have at home. <laughs> so anyway, um, the other way that we're kind of untethering is that we're a mobile people. We live in a mobile world. And um, cellular technology has really, really improved to where, again, the experience of watching video or even hearing audio is so, so much better. It's tolerable. And then you have other technologies like Bluetooth, a wireless, a wireless technology, a different wireless technology from your Wi-Fi, but it's all about transferring data, transferring information without a cord. Uh, that has really, really gotten a lot better. And as Renee mentioned, we've got Bluetooth, you know, wireless speakers now, and some of them are pretty good. I just took on a new line called Aton that has fabulous solar and Bluetooth um, little AM, FM radios and all kinds of cool stuff. So that's gotten a lot better. And if you've bought a car in the last three or four years, um, and of course everything starts at the luxury end first, and now it kind of has trickled down to um, 
regular cars, I'll call them regular cars, um, <laughs> but they are Bluetooth enabled so that you can um, pair your smartphone and listen to all your music off of your smartphone or your tablet. And some of the cars, of course, have screens, so you could actually like watch a show on there. But anyway, that technology has gotten really, really good. And of course, what are we looking at right now? A lot of conversation about self-driving cars on the extreme end of untethering. <laughs> That's like the right, extreme right. end. Well, hopefully these of people untethering. are not watching the screen while they're driving. <laughs> yeah, please no. <laughs> no, put me on pause. <laughs> Yeah. So, I you know, I just that brought up a, a cool memory back in the day when we used to have paper map books. Anybody remember the Thomas guides? There were like 200 pages of maps. And so now what do we have? We have digital GPS, global positioning systems that actually will allow us to get where we want to go wirelessly again. There again. So we've already started untethering. And of course, as I mentioned, we have a lot of devices. We've got access to all, how many devices do you have? Okay, do you have a cell phone and a tablet and a laptop? And I know there's business people who have one set of each, one for work and one for home. So we're walking around with all of these devices and one of my uh, really popular services today is actually syncing all of those devices together because it takes a little bit of doing to make them kind of talk to each other. And people are now understanding that you can't wait until you get home to make an appointment because someone will beat you to it and go buy or sell whatever you were selling while you're waiting to get home to check your schedule or to make a quote. So, um, yeah, so there's a big demand now to uh, sync these together. The problem is, is that they all require some kind of charging to work. Okay, so you got to, they need some electricity or some kind of stored power to work. And all of these devices, depending on what age they are, they all have different connectors on them because technology changes, it gets better. It tends to get smaller but better, but that means that it has to have some other way to connect. And so we end up having you know, a drawer full of you know, cords that we can't use when we go to buy a new device. You've got to buy a new cord or it comes with a new cord. So, um, yeah, so we end up with all these obsolete cords, but we still have to keep these devices charged up because if we're watching more video than we watch at home on a cell phone. So that takes a lot of juice. And of course, the batteries are getting a lot more powerful and a lot more um, smaller, but a lot more powerful so that you can watch a two-hour movie. Yes, I do binge watch on my cell phone. Um, <laughs> and so... <laughs> So you got to try to keep a cord around, uh, and I try to, I do try to encourage my clients to buy an extra. It's five dollars. Just buy an extra cord. Well, some of the iPhone cords are twenty dollars, but it's worth it to just keep one in your house and keep one at, uh, in your car, so you don't have to ask the bartender when you're at happy hour to charge your phone for you. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> which I've seen happen on several occasions. And, you know, it's just a kind of an inconvenience when you have to try and find a plug. And a lot of the restaurants, they don't have plugs on the walls where we sit. So <laughs> you're kind of out of luck. Um, so, and again, now, because I do uh, consultations, I have a much smaller cord and cable skid. It is a lot smaller than back in the old days, but I do keep that in the car because I never know who has what devices and I've always, I have to be the one that has to make them all work. So um, it is a little smaller. So I'm right there with you on the whole wireless thing. Okay, what's available to retire us from all of this? 
Well, there are people that are really working on this <laughs> really hard. Thank goodness. And um, right now, from my this is my perspective and my research, uh, I've come across mainly two alliances that are working on wireless charging. Now, this conversation today is about wireless power charging, how we keep our uh, mobile devices powered up. There's all kinds of other wireless power charging and stuff going on, but I'm trying to keep you with your devices kind of powered up. And the first one um, is, it's called, there are two alliances. You know what happens with this technology is that one set of manufacturers comes up with some cool idea, another one comes up with a different way to do the same thing, and then another one and another. So you have all these little coffee clashes of people that are creating technology after a couple of years or so, they decide, well, I think we'll get together and they'll join forces. So that's basically what's happened, that now it's pretty much, well, I could be wrong, but from all my research right now, it's these two camps of different manufacturers um, of um, devices as well as home products, the medical field, something really cool that is going to be happening in the medical field. All of those because everybody needs some kind of charge. Everything we use pretty much needs some kind of charge. And so the first one is the Wireless Power Consortium. And the symbol for it is Qi. It's a Chinese symbol. You pronounce it Qi, C-H-E-E. -E. And that, I'm not going to overload you in going into the weeds on the technology behind this, but when you see that symbol Qi, it's basically the inductive power standard. So, you know, if you want to go into the weeds on that, email me and I'll take you there. <laughs> and then the other one is called the Air, Air Fuel Alliance. And they use a combination of uh, power transmission technologies, the magnetic inductance and the resonant power transmission. Just remember Air Fuel and Qi. And both of them, though, basically charge the same way. They use different technology, but it's the same thing. So what it is, I'll go quickly through, is that you have to have something that, will, that has stored the power and will transmit it. And so typically they are some kind of a transmission pad. So it's got electrical energy in it, it's got energy in it, and it's a pad. So the pads come in all different kinds of shapes, and you can make them so that they can attach, I've seen a lot of them attached underneath a table, for instance. So the devices that need the charge will have embedded in them a chip, a receiver chip, okay, so that it will allow the device to receive the power. Okay, and you probably already could do wireless charging and you don't know it. Samsung has kind of put that out there for several years where they have the chip already embedded in their phones. Okay, so if you've had a phone in the last, through a Samsung phone in the last three years or so, you've already got the um, Qi Power already installed and you could go to a Starbucks or a McDonald's that has, um, that on one of their tables or counters and just plop your phone down and charge it while you're ordering your food. Well, you don't want to walk away and leave your phone. But while you're eating your phone, you can get a quick charge on your phone. So that's basically how they work. So, um, so these chips can actually go into anything. Actually, Samsung makes a 24-inch, well, a 24 and a 27-inch a monitor, a computer monitor that you can put your phone on the legs of it and charge your phone up while you're doing your work. Wow. So it comes in all kinds of ways, shapes, and forms. Okay, so a couple of the, um, the ways that you can have this, um, oh, you know, I jumped ahead. I forgot. Let me back up one second. There is a wired way that is still relevant today, and it's probably the least expensive. Sorry, I skipped that is it's, um, it's a little box that holds the charge. Yes, you would plug that into uh, a laptop. Usually they have a USB where you can plug it into a laptop or a computer that has a USB or one of the wall chargers or a car charger. But it also has another little cable that will plug into your mobile device. 
so that it will get a charge. And they'll charge them like two, three full charges. It depends on what size you get. So you're kind of wireless, you're quasi-wireless because you're still connected to um, a power bank. They're called power banks, but it's wireless. So you can stick it in your glove box and charge your phone up. Um, while you're out and about, or put it in your girl purse, we have girl purses, um, and charge it. And so that keeps you from having to <laughs> run into your friend's house and try and charge your phone. But uh, And those are uh, quite economical. They're anywhere from around, you know, $15, $20, $30, depending on how strong the charge is. So um, those are very, very handy. So you're not tethered to a wall plug, but you still have a device that will charge you. But that will be really, really helpful, and it can bail you out in a lot of times. Okay, so now um, how? what are some of the applications of this wireless Qi power and also the air fuel power? As I mentioned, there are little chips that go into the devices um, and so here are some of the deployments. A lot of the car manufacturers are jumping on this. You know, um, they're doing Bluetooth, but Bluetooth isn't really good for charging in a car. So what they're doing is they're putting transmission pads in different places in the car so that you can just put your phone on top of that. You don't have to um, plug anything in. And you know, that used to be the first thing that I looked for when I rented a car was, Okay, do you have a USB? Do you have a 3.5? What do you have that I can plug into to keep my phone charged while I'm on the road? Well, this is at the luxury high end right now, but it's going to trickle down to where it will be mainstream on a lot of the cars. Uh, and then here again, a lot of the restaurants, they'll be picking those up and deploying those. IKEA has a lot of products now that allow you, actually, you can make this onto your own um, your own furniture, but this is a picture on the lower right hand of a nightstand that has the Qi Power uh, module built into the nightstand, and you just simply put your phone right on the nightstand, and it lights up and it tells you, I'm charging. Well, it doesn't talk to you, but you can see that it's turned on. It will turn itself on and show you how much charge and how long it's charging. And then there's all kinds of um, as I mentioned, there are full countertops that can have the, the wireless power attached uh, Velcroed <laughs> underneath the table. I've seen it Velcroed at the shows where, you know, people can just walk up and just plop their phone down and charge their phone. Now, um, I just got um, authorized to sell Pond products, which you see on the, on the left side, and they're like artwork. But they're chargers. Yeah. So one of them is like a valet where you put your keys and then you just put your phone right next to it and charge your phone. So this deployment is coming in all kinds of really cool ways. Uh, I had mentioned to Renee earlier about one of the medical um, deployments is that with uh, people who have pacemakers or devices that need to be charged up or recharged, uh, that can be a pretty painful process for them. And um, so now with the Qi or even with the air fuel, they can actually get that charged up because the pacemaker may have some kind of a receiver in it just like the phones, and you just put the transmitter up and charge their pacemaker. So that's like a really, really cool application. So I've been tracking this for quite a long time, a couple of years, and earlier this year after I went to the Consumer Electronics Show, I actually did a show segment on my show Tech Diva and the Luxury Lifestyle. And so I have a slide here. When you get the PowerPoint, you can actually click on the link. It's called What's That? Uh, wireless Charging, and uh, it starts in about, mm, an hour 25 into the show, so that link will take you right there. And I've interviewed um, gentlemen from both alliances, so you'll get explanations probably better than me, and um, on both of these systems that are out there right now and uh, different deployments and applications. And so that's really cool. 
Okay, so for me, I do different workshops. As I mentioned, I do consultations all around. You can actually access my calendar if you want to hit me up and want to have a consultation or just generally find out a little bit of information about something that's been on your mind, you can access my calendar. And as I mentioned, there's a link there to techvivatv.com. That's my um, burgeoning, fledgling uh, online TV network. And the first show is Tech Diva and the Luxury Lifestyle. There are like 20 shows there that you can watch. I have one viewer, he binge watched my shows for eight hours. Oh <laughs> and that was kind of cool. <laughs> and then also, um, I've always wanted to have a way that I could get these products that I talk about to my audience and to my um, to my clients. So I've just soft launched. You're the first public announcement of my online tech boutique at Woo-hoo. Media Technologies Marketplace. And so I've put some of these products that I just talked about. Um, here on this page, and you can click on the link, again, in the PowerPoint, and go straight to the power section. I have a whole section that's going to deal with power. I didn't get a chance to talk about solar power chargers. They have those out there, too. But I have a whole section that um, is about power because that's a big deal, and we want to keep our devices rolling and keep us rolling. Well, thank you very much. And we got a couple of minutes for calls or questions. Okay. Good, good. Well, we do have some questions for you. Thanks, Zenobia. That was great because there's a lot of stuff I wasn't aware of. I like the whole idea of the solar thing because I wasn't aware that that kind of technology was available for charging and recharging devices. So a um, couple of questions. Um, one of our listeners says she needs a portable phone charger for a 39-mile walk this week, and it must be for the Breast Cancer Awareness Walk. And that isn't specific to her phone. That's about no longer to be used. So she's planning to switch phones. So she wants to have something that um, would be able to be used for, you know, let's say uh, Android perhaps or an iPhone. I think she's planning to get another iPhone. Um, Do you have any uh, recommendations about what kind of uh, power charge? And it needs to be something small. Yeah, I would probably say that one of the power banks would be good because, of course, before you do the walk, you're going to charge up everything. So charge that up. You can even get a piece of Velcro and Velcro them together. I don't know if you do, like, armbands or or if you have, like, we used to call them fanny packs, (laughs) where you have uh, something that can hold that. But that, to me, would be a good solution for you that uh, will probably get you through. I don't know how long it takes you to do 39 miles, but um, probably not in a day. I don't know, unless you're very good. But um, that would actually, that would help you a whole lot to um, get through your walk. Okay. All right. also, uh, let's see, the, there was a, a question about headphone uh, ports, and there's a concern that the AirPods leave, you know, throw off some radiation and are more losable um, than the wired ones. Do you have any thoughts about the wired versus unwired headsets? You know, that's a really, really good question. I hadn't really gotten that far, although I listened to about an hour and a half of the press conference yesterday. Uh, What they're referring to is that on the new iPhone 7 that was just um, announced, well, shown yesterday, Apple has decided, I heard rumblings of this from the beginning of the year, that they've decided to do away with the headphone jack altogether. And they've gone to making wireless earbuds. They're called AirPods. Um, That's a good question. Um, I would think that um, we're using Bluetooth because we're supposed to be hands-free when we drive. drive. So I would just suspect that the amount of um, the radiation, all of that is monitored very closely. And... uh, I'm not so sure that I would be a whole lot concerned about that. I would say I'd be concerned if you get into more than 15-minute conversations just like our regular cell phones. Um, 
Yeah, I wouldn't keep a regular cell phone up to my head more than 13, 14 minutes because of the um, the heat that gets generated from that. So anyway, that's to be seen. So using headphones in general, I mean, it's better. But I guess at the end of the day, we still got to look at, you know, can we use wireless or Wi-Fi, you know, AirPods or um, – because I also have some as well rather than the wired. I don't know if it makes a difference. So we'll just have to have you back to talk about that and relating it to the health um, and usage of, you know, a lot of technology products. So um, mm -hmm. that's uh, – I think that's a very good uh, – conversation that we can actually implement. So we yeah. are at the top of our half hour. There's always a lot more to talk about. Uh, Zenobia is extremely um, accessible. You can shoot her an email. Of course, she wants to make sure you're not a robo, so you'll get back a <laughs> confirming email and make sure you're a real person that she wants to talk to. You. <laughs> but um, but feel free to reach out to her to ask any kinds of questions that she might have, um, and uh, we expect to have her back next year. Feel free also to give us some ideas about topics that you want to hear about. Yes, um, absolutely. A lot of our, yes, our great um, um, ideas from a lot of our listeners and uh, uh, the people in our community. So um, we look forward to having you guys back on. Next month we will have a speaker, Erica Gaffari, who will be talking about making sure that your greatest asset is covered and what kinds of things that you can do to uh, protect yourself and your family. So with that said, I want to sign off. Thank everyone for joining us today. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on our Smart Women, Savvy Money, and Men series uh, next month. All the best. Take care. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>